Hey there, I'm going to show you seven useful features about the FL Studio's piano roll. If you're new, you know what to do, hit the subscribe button down below and let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to show you about the FL Studio's piano roll is that it does teach you about music theory, all right? And if I click on the stamp right here, that is this icon right here, you can see to come up with different chord types. And if you're making electronic music, right, these chords are very popular, augmented chords, diminished chords, fifths, major, major sevens, minor, minor sevens, ninths, octaves, suspended chords. These are very important chords that a, a lot of songs these days do have, all right? So if you are like me, you start music production without learning music theory, this can surely help you find your way around. So for example, if you want to know what a major seventh is, I can just simply click this. And when I click this, so you can see it's going to show you the formula, right? So this, you know, the typical keys, because C is one of the most popular keys for beginners, right? C, E, G is the typical triads, right? Well, if you look, you see, now it gives you a step, right? Gives you a step ahead, then this is the seven, because this is one, three, five, six, seven, all right? So the second feature I like about FL Studio's Piano Row is that it can give you something called scale highlights. That's gonna, it can show you this, the notes that make up a scale, even if you're not familiar with that scale at all. For example, if I come right here, and depends on the version of FL Studio, as in my version is a bit older, 20.7, I think, it's going to, have you right here in the drop down. But if you're using newer versions, right? Like maybe 20.8, 20 20.9, you may need to come to view to find your skill highlights. But if I come to help us, I'm going to see skill highlights, right? And all I have to do is click, first of all, click a skill. Let's say I want a major, all right? Then you can see it's going to arrange this box into light gray lines and dark gray lines. And I'm going to come right here again, help us skill highlights and select the key I want. Like, I don't know how G sharp sounds, so I'm going to click G sharp. And you can see, now you can, this is the tonic, right? So this is, this is like the root key of the scale. So and if you observe, you're going to see light gray lines and dark gray lines. The light gray lines are the notes that make up the scale. So let's make a quick chord using this, all right? Remember, I do not know how the, um, what notes make up the G major, all right? So let's come to the fifth octave. So let's form a chord. Remember one, three, five, one, two, three, four, five, right? All right, so let's reduce the length and then play the next chord. Five. Then let's play another chord again three, four, five. Then maybe I can just repeat this chord. And just like that, I've made a chord progression in G sharp major that I don't even know the notes that make up G sharp major. So the third feature I like about the FL Studio's piano roll is that you can actually make your chords sound more realistic if you do not have a MIDI keyboard. Now, you know when you play chords with your fingers, your fingers are not on the same length. So when you hit a chord, typically there's some um, delay or there's some latency in how fast your fingers hit the chords. So that makes it sound more realistic and pleasant to the ear. And if I play these chords now, they are all starting on the same line, having the same velocity, having the same intensity. And this is not realistic in in real music sense, okay? So FL Studio makes it easy for you to achieve same results if you do not have a MIDI keyboard or you, or you don't even have to play MIDI keyboard. All I have to do is press alternate S that is strong. This is one of the ways to do it. There's many ways to do it, right? And make sure you click preserve and so that it doesn't um, elapse into each other. For example, if you see that it's going to elapse into the next note, unless you want that, but most times I do not. So I just click preserve and, all right? So you see, I can play with this. So I, to adjust the, velo the starting points and also play with the velocity as well. You can see, if you look at the bottom of my screen right here, the velocity, and when I play this, and also another thing again I can do is I can also reduce the overall volume of this by pressing alternate X, reducing the, And see that it sounds so much more pleasant. But there's so many ways to go around this, but this is like the quickest way, alternate S to strum, then alternate X to adjust the loud. If you want it to be louder, you can make it that. If you want it to be more quiet, you can do that. I think I prefer this. 
All right, so this is what you can do to make your chords sound more realistic, like you use the MIDI keyboard in FL Studio. Really simple, really easy, and straightforward. So the fourth feature I like about FL Studio's piano is that you can actually export your MIDI chords. If maybe you like the chord progression you played or you love the way you played it, and you want to use it maybe in future projects because a lot of songs do use the same chord progression, right? It's not uncommon to see different songs by different people in different genres that have the same chord progression. It's very normal. So you can just simply export your chord progression by coming right here or your MIDI, even if it's a melody, anything at all, by coming right here, then coming to file, right? Then come to export as MIDI file. So you can save it to anywhere you want to save it to. Let's say you want to save it to your documents or whatever, right? Then you can save it, um, test. Let me just name it test MIDI, all right? And voila, it's saved. Or you can use the shortcuts, Ctrl, Shift, and M, and it's going to just pop it up and you can save it. And you can also drag it back in. So let's say, for example, let me bring in some MIDI chords that I've saved in the past. Um, for example, this right here, and I played. And just like that, I can start laying my drums and playing some crazy sounds, okay? So I think uh, I'm going to stick with this for now. So the fifth feature that I do enjoy using in FL Studio is the editable ghost notes. So let's say this is a typical drum pattern in FL Studio. And maybe I'm trying to make some changes, okay? Typically, if I want to maybe work on my kick, I have to come to my kick and focus on just my kick. Or if I want to come to my rims I have to come to my rims and focus on just about editable ghost notes i can actually control any of my sounds from any of the patterns so let's say i'm not even in any of them i mean this clap there's nothing running on the clap right come to piano row i can actually control for example this is the kick and i'm not in the kick this is uh the rim i'm not in the rim and if maybe you have sounds layered like i do right here you can split them up to know which is which so you can see this is a cool feature I like using in FLS in FLS use piano roll. And if you want to bring it out, all you have to do is come right here, come to help us, then make sure you select editable ghost notes. Or if you can't find it, the shortcut is Control Alternate V. Control Alternate V. That's how you get it in. So now let's do some modifications, right? So let's say I like this pattern, but I want to change how it sounds. Let me take it back to normal, then we hear. All right, so let's let's change this. All right, so I'm going to come right here. Then, all right, and just like that, I've altered the drum pattern of this project without going to the source clip for it. And this can really save you a lot of time if you actually when you have a lot of sounds going on, it can save you a lot of time. So the sixth feature that I think is really impressive in FL Studio's Piano Row is the fact that you can actually find out notes that are overlapping. So let's say you have a chord, and this can happen a lot, right? Let's say you were trying to maybe make it duplicate and maybe you just forgot that you're trying to do that. And now you can see it's not obvious that, that you have duplicate chords, right? This can happen when you're trying to move sounds around. You're trying to move melody notes around. It can happen. It's a very common thing. So if I come right here and I come to select, then I come to show over, uh, select overlapping notes, right? It's going to highlight anywhere that has overlapping notes. Now you can see these are overlapping notes. But let's say, for example, okay, let me take this out. Now, if I, I've taken this out, so this is the overlapping notes here. Let me take this out, overlapping notes here. Now, it's going to still show you where the overlapping notes are. So, I'm still going to come to select, all right? And come to select overlapping notes. You can see it's still going to show you where you have overlapping notes so that you can take care of that because having overlapping notes can increase the perceived loudness of the song or of the MIDI clip when it's not actually as loud as that. So, just make sure you take care of that. So, the seventh feature that I think is super, super impressive with FL Studio Piano is that you can actually copy drum patterns from audio clips that you like, even from songs that you like. And I'm going to show you how. So I'm going to play it to see if it's in tempo. All right, now let's um, adjust the tempo now and then see how it sounds. All right, it's in tempo, right? So now all I have to do is just drag this into piano roll, okay? Now it doesn't matter which um, clip, all I have to just open piano roll. All right, you may have you may just need to deselect it for a while that is detach it for a while so it can be more flexible, all right? Then you can reattach it back. All right, so now we have now you can see we have the audio clips. So now let's try to mimic the drum patterns ASAP, okay? So let's come to our rims. 
all right? If you look at this, right, this is typically the kick, then it's typically the, uh, the groove that is rims, all right? So let's pin that in. So when I just keep doing this, all right. So when we compare ours, all right, then we see that is the original. Then turn it off. So you can use this to get ideas for your drum patterns and it can sound really good. Of course, if you spend more time by playing the percussions, playing other sounds, it needs to sound a lot more like it. So this is a very useful feature that I really like about FS Studio's Piano Roll that makes production a whole lot easier compared to many other digital audio workstations. So if you found this helpful, don't forget to leave me with a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button down below for more tips and tricks. I remain so classy. See you soon. Cheers.